What is going on, Shoe Fanatics? Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I have another special box in the building tonight. And guys, listen, all year we've been getting a special box with these releases, except the Spider-Man 2.0s, the next chapter. I can't figure it out. But what we actually have inside of this box is one of the best releases this year. No lie about that. I'm not about to hype up with the sneaker of the year and the must cop and you sleep and all this other nonsense. I'm just telling you, this is a pretty good sneaker, especially for the price point. Let's dig right into it. First and foremost, you got this black on black box. I mean, it's a nice matte black box with the shiny Nike Air emblem. I mean, this is nice, man. It's just I like the box a lot. Size tag reads Jordan Airship PESP. Summit White and Gunsmoke. Pretty typical with most Airship PE releases, you do get this pamphlet just like they did back in the day. I'm gonna talk about this shoe and then we're gonna talk about the shoe. Inside of the pamphlet, you had this nice little blurb about what the Airship PE is, which I'll go into depth a little bit later on. Of course, the tech specs and all that good stuff, nice little touch. I love when Jordan Brand gives us a piece of nostalgia and history by including things like this inside of the box. Ladies and gentlemen, I am beyond pleased to present to you the Nike Airship PE Tech Gray. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, another PE, as it were, a Nike Airship PE. Now this guy, man, I'm telling you, like I said, this is one of the better quality and just better releases for the entire year. I don't know how to say it more plainly than that, but I would hype up the shoe too much and sound crazy, but it's that damn good. On the bottom, you have that Tech Gray radio traction pad, the same as your typical Air Jordan 1. And again, like I said, we'll talk about the shoe and I'll tell you why that's similar in a minute. Flipping the shoe over up on the midsole, you have a nice wide midsole and then an all white upper in what is some really nice soft leather. Now the conversation always shifts between what is actual quality leather versus good leather and all that's really subjective. But what I can say is the community as mostly a whole has come to agree that soft leather equals better. Now my opinion is not necessarily because the shoe is soft in particular, but because the way the shoe looks visually when you had that tumbled kind of soft leather. The shoe just looks quality. Even if it's not actually embodying quality, like say the high 85 OGs, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit later on, but the high 85 OG colorways, those definitely have a nice stiff, but real genuine leather quality on them. These, not so much. And what I think makes good quality is the cuts and the thickness of the layers of leather contained within. In this particular case, what you probably have is a little bit less a thickness of layers, and that kind of lends to the tumbleness of the shoe itself. But continuing on, that is the entire shoe with the exception of this hairy or nappy suede as it were, up around the collar, as well as on the swoosh on both lateral and medial sides. So as far as material changes, I mean, that's pretty much it. You have a nice, decent, but very good looking quality leather and very nice, decent, very good looking hairy suede material on the shoe. So as aforementioned, the Summit White on the shoe is a really nice touch, but a little treat is the actual kind of sail or off-white cream color of the tongue itself. And that's really a nice vintage or just kind of old looking touch. I really like how this tongue contrasts with the actual shoe itself. It's a really, really nice touch. Add to that, the actual tongue tag is Nike Air with a gray on gray colorway. Around the back, you have the Nike Air, which is again, a nice little touch and a dark stitch colorway. As usual, I am pleased to present that there is a nice white lace included, as well as a tech gray spare pair of laces, which man, like I said, lace swaps are never a bad thing. Who doesn't like options? Now, as far as the design itself, I mean, it's pretty much cut and dry. That is a colorway and material changes for the shoe itself. But now let's talk about the Airship PE as it were. This shoe can be considered the one before the one. Now, the community as a whole will have you believe that the first shoe that Jordan wore on court was in fact the Jordan 1 Chicago. Even if you happen to watch the Air movie, of course, starring Ben Affleck and Matt Damon, talking about the genesis of the Chicago shoe in general, that's the only shoe that really comes about. But in fact, the first Air Jordan to release is actually a lot closer to this model, the Air Jordan 1 Black Toe, complete with a red lace and a black tongue. You've seen this shoe back in 1985 in multiple ad prints, MJ's wearing a shoe around his neck at a playground, and of course, we're waiting for the return of this shoe in a high LG 85 form sometime hopefully next year. But a lot of the ad campaigns actually made you believe that the band shoe was in fact the Air Jordan 1 bread, which again, that wasn't the case. When I call this shoe the one before the one, this is actually the silhouette that MJ first wore in a court in a black and red colorway 
just like the Jordan 1 bread. Now the problem with that shoe, as famously said on David Letterman's late night talk show, was there was not enough white in it. And of course they made reference to the Air Jordan 1 bread. But what that interview did not tell you, nor did the Air movies, that the Air Jordan 1 was actually not available nor ready for MJ to wear during the start of the 1985 season. So during a period of transition, the Air Jordan 1 airship was actually the first shoe that MJ donned while playing in the NBA. Of course, designed by the famous Peter Moore, the airship was the one that was actually banned for not having the proper team colors in the shoe. That was also the shoe that Nike was willing to absorb all the fines for in promotion of the actual upcoming Air Jordan 1. So all in all, although not mentioned in the annals of history with the same prestige as the Air Jordan 1, the actual Air Jordan lineup owes a lot to the transition period when MJ was wearing the Nike Airship. Now the reason why this silhouette was called the Airship PE is because MJ actually had a few design cues, a little bit of tech specs and different things he was communicating with Nike about that he wanted to see change. And so the shoe that MJ decided to play in when all was said and done is the silhouette version that Nike decided to bring back for us to consume. So as I mentioned earlier, the actual sole of the Airship PE is very reminiscent if not the exact same as what's on the Jordan 1. The tooling of the soles damn near identical because the Jordan 1 was just this much close from being ready. You can take one look at the shoe and see the subtle design differences between the actual finished product and the airship, including but not limited to different hole patterns on the toe box as you can see displayed here. Although stabilizer straps are present on the forefoot, on the airship you can actually see elastic straps that help separate and make more space around the forefoot for MJ to play in. Hopefully the camera's picking this up, but you can see less stitching around the toe box to make some more flexibility around again the forefoot. There are also several different stitching patterns coming from the lateral and medial side of the shoe going up into the actual lace holes. Speaking of lace holes, the actual airship does not have a lace hole down at the peak here where it does have one on the Air Jordan 1. As you can see on the heel of the Air Jordan 1 final product, there is a piece of leather that wraps around on the heel portion, where on the Airship, that actual leather wraparound is devoid of that. While the version two remastered series of the Air Jordan 1 is trying to come close as it possible to the 1985 version, you can see on this particular shoe that they tried to get a larger swoosh to mimic again that 1985 version. On this one, you can see how large the swoosh already is. Again, harkening back to that first transition period before the Air Jordan 1. Now, in addition to additional leather pieces on the Air Jordan 1 final product, you can see that the collar does have a nice wrap around all the way from one side to the other, including the actual lace holes. Again, that leather is not present on the collar of the airship. So hopefully with these two shoes side by side, you can see the final design changes from transition airship period until the Air Jordan 1 production that we ultimately got. And I would be remiss if I did not mention the Air Jordan 1 Ball and Wings logo, which is famous now, is not present on the Nike airship. Now this particular colorway, as well as most of the airships, if I'm not mistaken, have come to us by way of neighborhood drops. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the neighborhood drops, Nike has made an initiative to kind of get more into the community. Now, typically, you're able to get most of your sneaker pickups from multiple sneaker apps. In particular, we're talking about the Nike and Sneakers app. But as I mentioned earlier, in order to foster a better sense of community, Nike and Jordan brand, and whoever is responsible for uh, allocating these shoes, ship these shoes directly to your neighborhood boutiques. So while not every place in the entire country is going to have neighborhood boutiques, hopefully there's some kind of boutique within a reasonable range and you'll be able to find these. Not to mention, most boutiques do have an online presence, for better or for worse, that you're going to be able to pick these shoes up relatively easy. Thankfully, the demand and the hype on these particular shoes is not that high, but Nike has been on an absolute tear, in my opinion, with the Airship releases. This pine green, this team orange, I believe there's also a yellow, maybe a university yellow colorway, this tech gray, as well as the Every Game 2-pack, which come in a blue and red versions, Nike Airships have been phenomenal this year. And although the Every Game pack is really nice, I really do think that this tech gray gives that particular shoe a run for its money. Now, as far as sizing is concerned, I would go true to size on this. Whatever you typically wear in your Air Jordan 1, I think you can get away with wearing the same size in the Airship. Not to mention, although I do believe you have a little bit of a narrower toe box throughout the shoe, what you do have again is that stabilizer strap with elasticity to give you a little bit more leeway for more comfortability. The great thing about these shoes is if they're not readily available at boutique sites now, they actually are available on aftermarket sites for almost less than retail. These two shoes definitely are available for less than retail, and this one still may be hovering around retail as of this recording. Overall, I don't know how the rest of my 2023 is going to shake up, but this shoe is solidly in my top 10 for the pickups 
right now. I mean, it's, it's that good to me. What a lot of folks wanted to do was compare this particular shoe to the neutral gray high 85 OG colorway, which unfortunately I do not have. But again, this shoe is rooted with that neutral gray kind of colorway in the past history. And I think it does I think it does it justice if you're asking my opinion. All that being said, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a couple of lace swap options. Go outside, get you guys on feet. And man, I just wanna thank you guys for supporting the channel. And until the next one, man, I have been Jay Shoe Fanatic. If you enjoyed this review, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell. And until the next one, I'm out of here. That's you know. Oh, the original cut. There it is. I might like it better than the 2020 version. Oh.